Hello, everybody. This is Tom Eckert here. You're listening to my podcast, Numerology, a GPS for the soul. This is your place to learn about the true power of numerology and how to use it to bring out the best in yourself, understand your loved ones better, take wise decisions, and prepare for your future. In other words, how to live your life aligned with your true destiny. Take your time to educate yourself and share these podcasts with your friends and family so they too can enjoy the great benefits of numerology. Enjoy! Hello everybody and welcome to this episode. I'm going to talk about a subject that many people are interested to hear and to know the secrets about in numerology. And that is, which numbers are the best numbers to have? Which numbers perhaps are the luckiest numbers of all? So, drums roll. I want to reveal a truth to you that maybe will never repeat itself again. The truth is as follows. There are no best numbers. Boom. You see, people sometimes come to me and tell me seven seems to me an unlucky number. Oh my God, my son or my daughter have a seven in their chart or a seven in their cycle or pinnacle. That's terrible. That's really not good because seven is a bad or unlucky number. Sometimes I have people come to me tell me, oh yes, he has or she has a three. That's really lucky. That's a good time. This is a time of prosperity and luck and, you know, everything is in a kind of happy-go-lucky state. And my friends, this is pseudo-numerology. This is um, charlatanism numerology. And, and, and I want to represent real numerology, real, mature, wise, and intelligent numerology rooted in, in, in wisdom, rooted in intelligent thinking. Let's deepen into this statement. Every number, every number from one to nine does not have a specific um, position, we can say. We cannot say that, like, for example, number three is good versus number four that is bad. No number has such a definition. All numbers have both a light and a shadow side. That means that each number in our chart can express itself potentially as either a positive expression or a negative expression. And very often, it depends on us, on the way that we work with our given numbers, how the number is going to express itself. You see, part of numerology, and this is what is not talked about enough, is that the numbers that we are given at birth are both gifts of existence, are both a certain inherent structure, a blueprint that represents our personality, our structure, uh, the vehicle that we are. But at the same time, these are also qualities, these are also lessons that we must learn and fulfill. You see, so it is a co-creation. It is not a given state that we should simply succumb to and say, that's it, that's my, ver- that's the verdict of the universe for me. I'm an unlucky person. Or, yay, I'm a lucky person. The universe has gifted me with luck. What is luck anyhow? Right? If I go through a very, very difficult trying time, let's say, in my life, which many of us do, but I come out of it strengthened, empowered, more wise, more capable of taking intelligent, well-thought-of decisions, then Was it unlucky in the first place to go through a rough time? And what if I'm quote unquote very lucky and things go pretty smoothly for me, let's say even almost my entire life, but I've not grown much throughout my life. This very smooth experience didn't create enough friction for development. 
didn't push me to a new frontier, then is that really lucky? What is lucky? Is lucky comfortable? And is unlucky uncomfortable? You see, what do we mean when we say lucky or unlucky or good or bad numbers? Good or bad is always based on our desires. If I desire to be someone who never experiences pain or emotional agony and I experience some of that, I might, might call myself unlucky. But if I'm someone who wants depth, intelligence, and growth, and I know that it of, often comes out of experiencing friction in life and experiencing all the different variety of emotions, I might consider myself actually lucky to be able to experience the different range of, range of emotions from the highest ups to the lowest downs and everything in between, making me a real intelligent man. You see, it's not so much about talking about the numbers per se. I don't want to talk about each and every number to convince you, but I want you to understand how to look at numerology and how to look through the lens of numerology because you're going to find many books out there that talk about the numbers in this way or another and tell you that this number is like that and that number is less like that and this number is preferable in this situation and that number is preferable in that situation. But these are not absolute rules. You see, for example, you might say to someone, look, a sunny day is the best day to, I don't know what, you know, have a great uh, trip. But what if I'm a person who loves it when there's like a, a drizzle going on and I love being outside. I just love it. You know, I even love taking an umbrella and splashing my feet in the rain and, and, and walk when it's a little bit rainy, just a gentle, sweet rain. So what, what's preferable weather for me? You see, it all depends who I am. Who are you? Seven. I've heard some numerologists say is a less lucky number. And I'm going to tell you that seven is a number that pulls us and propels us to go deep in our life, to look beyond the surface of things and to find a deeper understanding of the why of life, the meaning of things. It wants us to probe deeper. It wants us to research, to find truth in things. And finding truth is such a fundamental wish of the soul. How can we ever say about seven that seven is unlucky? Seven pushes us to see things in ways that very few people see and will ever see. However, it is true that seven also has a shadow side, just like any other number. The shadow side of seven can be suffering from emotional closeness, a tendency for anxiety and depression, some kind of heaviness, a tendency for emotional complication, right? So every energy, every cosmic energy that the numbers represent has a shadow and a light side. Let's take the number three that sometimes people consider as lucky. And I'll tell you about three, that three is very creative, uh, has a very wakeful mind, very curious energy, loves to learn, loves to be updated, um, can be very expressive, very sweet, very social, very colorful, humoristic, right? Sounds so sweet, sounds so promising. However, I'm also going to tell you that three has a shadow side. Three lacks a direction in life. Three does not have a spine. Three doesn't really know what it's doing here. Three also doesn't know how to make good discernment and discrimination in life. Therefore, the judgments of three can very often be misleading. The threes tend to see things through a pink lens and then be deeply disappointed by the truth of life that can be very disillusioning. So three can suffer great tragedies because of its misinterpretation of reality. Now, is that lucky? Is that unlucky? Again, these terms become invalid. I have people thinking that four is an unlucky number for the, the kind of um, number that nobody wants, especially women often have resistance 
um, for having fours in their chart. But let's talk about number four. Yes, let's, let's start from the shadow and then move to the light. So it is true that number four has a shadow. In its shadow side, it is, it's overly strict, harsh, square-minded, not open to new ideas, conservative, um, bumping its head into the wall instead of finding solutions, very resistant, um, very, we can say, we can say has a broom up its butt, okay, kind of stuck, tends to be stuck, tends to delays, things don't move smoothly with number four in its shadow. So now let us talk about the beautiful side about number four, of number four, because it does have a beautiful side. Number four, imagine having a solid, stable, warm and safe ground under your feet. Having a root chakra that is healthy, that is robust, that is with a good infrastructure, everything is, is, is moving smoothly and safely and you can trust it completely. You know you're standing on a reliable ground. You're a reliable person. You are a trustworthy person. You're a good friend. You're an anchor to lean on. You see, imagine what an amazing energy. You are someone that I know is loyal. If you have a strong four, I know that you're a person of your word. You keep your promises. Now, isn't that amazing? Isn't that impressive? You see, so every number has a gift. Every number has a potential. There is no number better than another. And understanding this means growing. It means growing up. Because looking at things as good or bad, better or worse, lucky and unlucky, this is the perspective of the victim. The victim believes that life has decided for them how things are going to be like. And this is why very often people will go to numerologists to get the answer, the absolute and final answer to how something is going to come out. Will she love me? Will he want me? Will I get the job? Will uh, I be rejected if I ask her out? Will I win the trial? You understand? What do you mean when you ask these questions? Do you mean that all has been already written and that's it? That you're just a victim in the hands of a life that, it, that, that either predicted to begin with your luck or, 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 or lack of luck? I think a little bit otherwise. You see, as a numerologist, my job, my mission is to help people grow up. To help people feel empowered. To help people understand that despite the fact that definitely for a great part life decides the rules, there is also a part for us to co-create. And I want to help you to know how to co-create in the most creative and empowered and responsible way. So that you grow in autonomy, self-authority, and inner strength. I'll give a few more examples just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. You see, if you have number one as a leading number in your chart, you see, on, on the one hand, you see, you can say that it can give you a, a very strong willpower, which means that you can be a strong leader, you can be um, someone who's leading with their ideas, okay? An innovator, an entrepreneur, uh, someone who always has um, the ability to make uh, strong, sharp uh, decisions when needed, right? So one can say, oh, you, may, you have this amazing number, you're a strong person, you're so lucky. But then again, what about relationships? How does one work for relationships? You see, people with strong ones very often struggle in relationships. 
they are so individualistic they're so not open to to other people's opinions they're so not open to listening to another point of view they so much like their own individualistic solo space that it can be very challenging for them to be in an in a relationship so I'm just demonstrating to you how every number has challenges but also gifts now does it mean that because I have one I'm not going to be able to be in a relationship if I want to or does it mean that if I have another number I'm not going to be successful in making decisions no not necessarily it doesn't mean that it means that I will have certain gifts and certain doors that are open to me more than others and other doors that I have to strive to refine myself and my numbers in order to make them possible that's the real trick that's the real gift numerology is a system of helping us live in alignment with the universal tides with our universal original blueprint and So that we may live in alignment with life, not have final answers and simply rest in our couch doing nothing, feel either resignated or empowered temporarily because we feel we got the answer we wanted or the answer we didn't want. The purpose of numerology is to help us live in alignment with the purpose, the original purpose of our soul. And this is a co-creation. It demands of us to grow and to move consciously and constantly be present and show up as the numbers progress and as we move on in life, year by year, month by month. That's the real magic of numerology. And every number, each and every number, has an ability to become more and more refined, progressively more refined. moving into subtler and subtle levels of manifestation. And that's the real secret of growth through numerology. So in conclusion, I want to say, use your numbers as pointers to ever increasing ever higher potential of evolution, of growth, of self-understanding. Never look at your numbers as a kind of final verdict. This is not the way it is. Yes, your numbers will define certain tendencies about you. That's true. Exactly like if I'm tall, I'm tall. And that's it. It defines certain things about me as a human being. If I have blue eyes, I have blue eyes. It defines something about my structure. It's true. But how I'm going to use my eyes is very much up to me. What am I going to use my height towards? What, what end am I going to use it towards? It's up to me. Do I want to be a basketball player? Do I want to, I don't know, do, be a gardener that can reach high places on the trees? That's up to me. Right? So your numbers are opportunities for growth. There are some things we have to accept, surrender to in the numbers, structurally, structurally. And others that we are completely open to move with and decide. So there are no best numbers out there. There are only potentials. There are only qualities that have a wide range of manifestation capacity, from light to shadow, from shadow to light, often moving a little bit between the two and into both, and very much depend on our, willingness to always grow and always listen thank you so much for listening my friends and see you in the next episode i hope you enjoyed this podcast if you did and you want to go deeper into numerology check out my website tom minus eckert.com You can also book a numerology reading or even study numerology yourself through my courses. I'll see you in the next episode.